the draftsman. Pew! Ha! Huh? What? Hi there, Tom Thomas. What are you drawing? I'm not drawing. This is called drafting. What's the difference? Tell me, is that a circle? Sure is. And that? It's a circle, too. Only, it's a rounder one. Of course. That's because I drafted it with a compass. And now I've got a real target. So now I'll load my dart gun. Whoa! Why'd you shoot that thing at me? It was the gun. I didn't even pull the trigger. What? Did it break? Hmm. Let's open it up and see. There. This little part broke. Let me go find Papoose. He can help you. He can make another one. A brand new one. <laughs> Wait. I can draft a technical drawing. Will Papoose understand how to read one of those? Are you kidding? Papoose is an expert at everything. <laughs> Done. Wow, Tom Thomas, you're a real technical drawer. A draftsman, Nolik. That's what they call it. Try drawing a perfect circle by hand. Can't do it, huh? Well, with the help of a drafting compass, your circle will turn out great. Just put the needle point in the center and turn the compass, and it's done. A compass is only one of the many different tools for drafting. For example, if you need to draw a straight line, use a ruler. And if you need to draft a frame for your picture, you can use a triangle. First draft one side, and then the other. And then to finish your frame, just turn the triangle upside down and draft the two remaining sides. You'll get a perfectly squared frame. There are also drafting instruments for making curved lines. They are called irregular curves, or French curves. But actually, now people use computers more and more for drafting technical drawings. Papoose! Huh? Ooh. Ooh. What? What happened? We really need your help. One of the parts broke in Tom Thomas's dart gun. Could you make it? What kind of part exactly? Look, here's a technical drawing. So, you even got a technical drawing. Very good, then. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> Here you go. Super. Let's see. Hmm, it's not gonna work. You see, it sticks out here on the side. I need to draft another technical drawing. Papoose! Huh? Ah! <sighs> Nolik, you scared me again. Forgive me, but the part has to stick out over on this side. <sighs> and you're sure that's all? That's all, for real. Tom Thomas, it's done. Listen, while you were gone, I realized that the part needs to have a hole right here. Papoos? <laughs> ah, ah. Again? Uh, sorry about this, but there's a hole in this thing, too. A technical drawing is a special kind of drawing. It has to precisely describe the thing that needs to be made. To do that, the drawing must be very accurately drafted and include all of the measurements. And that's not all. If the object is complex, it must be drafted from at least three sides, including the front, the side, and the top. You see? The object looks different from every side. So if you don't want to work over and over again, learn to draft correctly. And boom! It works! Bullseye! And all thanks to our technical drawings! <laughs> yeah! After three tries, right? Some draftsman you are! <laughs> now I can draft all sorts of technical drawings. Even one of you, if you'd like. Uh, no, don't bother. Hey! Great! That tickles! Now do me a favor and turn. Hey, what are you doing there? Mm -hmm. Just stop! What's going on? Now I think I got it. It's done! And what's that circle for, huh? That's the top view. You know what, Simka? That's what you really look like from up here. Nolik, 
Take this over to Papus. He can use it to make another Simka. No thanks, Tom Thomas. For me, one Simka's enough. The Kaleidoscope. Tom Thomas, when are you gonna give me a peek at your new ball? I just can't wait. I told you, you can see it as soon as I hang it up. You're not peeking, are you? No, I'm not. Oh! So, can I look at it now? Sure, take a look. Which one? This one. <gasps> you broke it! It's okay, don't be sad. I know what to do. <laughs> Tom Thomas, look inside the kaleidoscope. What for? I looked already. Come on, there's something in there I'm sure you've never seen. Whoa. <laughs> cool, isn't it? What is it? It's my own invention, a pirate kaleidoscope. Glass, right? Uh-huh. It's great, I really like it. Tom Thomas, hi there. I heard that you got a pretty ball to hang on the tree. Shh. Can I see it? It's right there. Where? There. No! Oh, that's just terrible! Why'd you do that, Simka? Come on now, I just cheered him up. How? Tell me! With the kaleidoscope, remember what Grandpa's taught us? Do you know what makes a kaleidoscope have such beautiful patterns? Ah, it's because pieces of multicolored glass are tumbling around in there. And it's also because it has mirrors inside. Usually there are three of them, and they are arranged facing each other. That way, each piece of glass makes many, many reflections that create the kaleidoscope's beautiful symmetrical patterns. By the way, you can put just about anything you want inside a kaleidoscope, and each different thing makes its own special pattern. Yes, there are all kinds of kaleidoscopes. Some with buttons inside, some with flowers, and even some that are filled with insects. Once, a very rich man had a kaleidoscope made with precious stones inside. <laughs> yeah, it probably wouldn't have been nearly as beautiful if he had just filled it up with money. Tom Thomas, look inside the kaleidoscope. I already saw it. It's pirates. Nah, it's not about pirates. We changed it. Go on, look and see. Wow. You like it? A lot. Hey, what did you put in there? A few pieces of the ball that you smashed. It's even better for Christmas, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, that didn't work at all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! We came to take a look at that splendid new Christmas suit. Oh, what's what? wrong? Ugh, don't even ask us that. I've got it! Tom Thomas! What? Look inside the kaleidoscope! Again? I don't want to. And I'm telling you, you've got to. Fine. Cool, yeah! Merry Christmas! Thanks so much. Now, don't you feel good again? Yeah. It's really something. And you're the first human in the world that's ever seen it. How about that? Turn it! It's great, isn't it? Wondrous designs that tickle the eye In the kaleidoscope Shimmering scenes Gingerbread trees
everybody. Tom Thomas, I came to look for myself at that beautiful Christmas. Shh. It's okay. What's more important? Having such awesome friends? Or some ball hanging from a tree? Tubes. Today's lesson will be on pipes and tubing. Right here inside of this laboratory, you can see them all over. Look! Over there! And there! Some more over there, and there's another one. So, who can tell me some different uses for tubes? Digit. Uh, They're used in plumbing to carry the water. No, like, in school, we don't give an answer without being called on. Digit. You can. And for carrying waste. I am talking to Digit now. Gas goes through pipes, too. Stop interrupting us. And don't forget about smoke in a smokestack. No, like, that's just rude behavior. Out right now. All right. And a shower hose. That's also a tube, right? I told you to get out. Yikes. And a vacuum cleaner's got one, too. Hmm. And those spy glasses that pirates use when they're sailing. Hey, what do you say we all go and sneak out of here? Great idea. Let him call out to himself. Shh. And a trumpet's a tube that you blow through. <laughs> Nolik is my younger brother. There's a lot he still doesn't know. But that doesn't stop him from getting involved in things he probably shouldn't. Unfortunately, that can get him into trouble. So, every once in a while, me or my parents have to rescue him. No, I wouldn't call Nolik a pest. He's just a bit curious. That's why he broke the number one fixie rule, hide from humans. Nolik's the one who first became friends with Tom Thomas. Well, I was there too, but Nolik started it. Actually, <laughs> first it was Grampus. Many years ago, he befriended Professor Eugenius. And after that, the professor let us have our school in his laboratory. So it turns out that Nolik is just like his grandfather. Digit, go on then. Tubes are, uh... Wow! Just look at all the tubes in here. There's rubber ones and glass ones that are curvy. Oh, yeah! Pens! Parts of them are tubes, too. Ugh. Um... <laughs> he stopped talking. He ran out of ideas. <sighs> and those tube slides at the water park. <laughs> <laughs> the barrel of a rifle and the shell of a bullet. Those are tubes. Oh, there's a tube with a serious crack. And it's also dripping and hissing. It's dripping? Where? How can I show you when you kick me out of class? <laughs> What's going on? Take a look. That tube up there is leaking. <gasps> That's acid dripping out. Is that dangerous? It's awful. Any second now, it'll explode. <gasps> Where did Professor Eugenius go? He went to eat his sandwich. So what we do? It's a disaster. Don't panic. Fire, Verda. Go to that hose and shut off that valve. Simka, go get a pack of We'll fix this pipe ourselves. It's very important to be sure that a pipe won't leak. But making pipes that won't leak isn't so easy. Pipes can be made by rolling up a sheet of metal and sealing it up. Unfortunately, the seam can break. And that's why people have figured out how to make pipes without seams. They do it by stretching out hot metal on special machines. And PVC pipes are squeezed out of hot plastic like pasta. When the plastic is cooled down, it hardens into a pipe. We fixed it just in time. Nolik, way to go there. Hey, Simka, where is he? Don't know. Heh, <laughs> he finally left. Here I am. Nolik, I want to thank you for being alert. And I'd like you to join our class. Tiddy! Only don't forget, in my class, students cannot answer unless they're called on. Now then, pipes and tubing. Digit, please continue. Well, 
but Nolik said all of them already. <laughs> <laughs> Nolik. Not all. A straw for drinking a shake is a tube. And some noodles are tubes made out of dough. And what's it called? Uh, that thing. A hole in a mountain. Wait a second, I'll get it. A volcano! That's not it. They go this way. I mean the kind that go like that. <laughs> They're tunnels! You got it! Well done there. Yeah. The prosthesis. Simka, over here. Take a look at what I found. <laughs> it's a bear. Ooh. What bear did you find, Nolik? You know, it's the one Tom Thomas told us about. He was his best friend in the whole wide world. Until he became friends with you and me. Uh-huh. Let's try to wind him up. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Now look, Teddy. Go on, Teddy. Yeah. <gasps> oh. Oh, no. Poor little Teddy Bear. They ripped his leg and didn't care. We didn't rip his leg. It was already broken. It's all clear. A compound fracture. Then why don't we fix him? Tom Thomas will be so happy. Wait. It's not going to be that easy to repair it. We'll need a prosthesis. The human body is built around a frame of bones and joints. And if you break one of the bones, it'll usually heal by itself. The broken bone will grow back together, and you'll be back to normal. But sometimes bones or joints can break so badly that it's impossible for them to heal. When this happens, they have to be replaced with an artificial part called a prosthesis. A prosthesis can replace more than a bone or a joint. It can be made to replace a whole arm or a leg. And where are we going to get a prosthesis? I'm positive we can get it from Professor Eugenius. You're right. Help is on the way. Hello, Professor Eugenius. Ah, I'm pleased to see you, dear children. How do you do? Hi there. Professor Eugenius, can you make a prosthesis? What, have you broken something? Uh, no, not us. It was the bear. He broke his leg. What bear? The teddy bear that used to be Tom Thomas's friend. Ah, now I see. Today, with the help of modern prosthetics, more is being replaced than just arms and legs. For example, if you lose a tooth, it can be replaced with an artificial one. That's also a prosthesis. And there are times when a person starts losing their vision because the lens in their eye gets foggy and can't focus. For this, there's another kind of prosthesis. A new clear artificial lens. A prosthesis can also be used to help people with poor hearing. A tiny device can be put inside of somebody's ear so they can hear what's going on. And that's not all. People have also learned how to treat a sick heart by replacing its worn-out parts with prostheses. What fantastic inventions these prostheses are. It's amazing what they can do. They help people live a full life. Professor, is it working out? We'll know soon enough. Here you go. Thanks so much for your help, Professor Eugenius. Not at all. Take care, kids. In gadgets and devices, our work will never end. Appliances are fickle. They need a loyal friend. At morning, noon, and midnight of every single day, when there is an emergency, you know we're on our way. One, two, three. Tish. Inside will be Tish. all day. Right. Well, now this old friend of Tom Thomas's will be just like new, Nolik. Simka, if Tom Thomas makes friends with the bear, then what? Will he stop being friends with us? Hi, everybody. Hi there. Oh, my teddy bear. You found him for me. 
And you fixed him. Ah, oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, it's just like Grandpa said. A friend that's old is better than two that are new. Who's new and who's old? Well, the bear is old. And we're new. Nolik, it's not true. You're the Fixies, guys. You're my very, very best friends in the whole wide world. Tish! Batteries. Oh, my little lemon, just you wait. One day you'll be a strong and splendid tree. <laughs> She's talking with a flower pot. <laughs> oh, you scared me. <laughs> Do you like it? Like what? My seedling. Don't you see? It will grow into a huge tree. And there, amongst the green leaves, will be beautiful yellow lemons. Class! From that thing, lemons? <laughs> oh, yeah. It'll grow into a tree. All it needs for that is to gather energy. Get energy from where? From our sun! <laughs> the sun? It'll be so slow. Oh! Batteries would be faster than the sun. Batteries? I really don't think so. Tula, do you know how much energy they have? Let's just bury a bunch of those batteries in here, and you'll be watching your lemon plant shoot up into a tree. Are you positive? Absolutely. And where can we get the batteries? Over there. Professor Eugenius has a whole box full of them. Batteries! Batteries! We use them every day and need them by the ton. Batteries! Batteries! They give power to appliances so they can run. the first lemons before the week's over. The first battery in the world was made in Italy more than 200 years ago. When two different kinds of metal were placed in salty water, electricity started flowing through a wire from one piece of metal to the other. Many years have passed since then, but batteries still work in pretty much the same way. Today, you can find batteries being used for electricity just about everywhere. Tiny batteries are used inside of wristwatches, while big batteries can power cars and even ships. With new batteries being produced by the millions, we have to think, how should we get rid of the old ones? You can't just throw away batteries because they'll poison our soil and water. The best way to dispose of batteries is to take them to a special collection station that sends them to factories for recycling. Yes, yes, it's a terrible idea to bury batteries. You can kill any plants that are growing there. <gasps> and this is the very reason why Professor Eugenius puts all of his used batteries in that box over there, so he can dispose of them properly. Hey, where are they? Oh, my seedling, we harmed you. What? Where are the batteries? They're in the flower pot. How come? So the lemons would grow faster? From the batteries? Who came up with that idea? It will die! Hurry! We gotta go save it! Hm, the soil's contaminated. We've got to find a new home for the seedling. But where? Over there. There's a pot with healthy soil. Let's do it! Batteries! Batteries!
<laughs> Don't cry, Tula. The seedling will be perfectly fine. It will grow big and strong with branches full of beautiful lemons and oranges. And watermelons. It's a lemon tree fire. Will you ever stop going too far, like with the batteries? Well, anyhow, batteries are cool, right? Look how many appliances can't work without them. You're right. Appliances can't work. Look, the seedling's coming back to life. <gasps> it really is. Tula, tell us, isn't it splendid? <gasps> splendid. The Shadow Play. There, Tom Thomas. What are you doing here? Uh, I dropped a paper clip. Give me some light. <laughs> huh. What's so funny, huh? We're trying to help you out. <laughs> You've got funny shadows, that's what. Hey, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eagle. <laughs> and Simka is a goose. <laughs> she looks more like a moose. I do, huh? <laughs> You're like real actors performing in a show. Uh-huh. Actors play in a theater, you know. And we're just under a bed. And so what? <gasps> How about we make our very own theater? A theater with shadows. Class! Tom Thomas, we need a, a piece of paper, a huge sheet. <laughs> it's really quite easy to make your own shadow theater. You can make the screen out of a white sheet or a big piece of paper. Next, make sure the room is dark and shine a desk lamp at the screen. Now, to make the shadows, just put yourself or a cardboard cutout between the lamp and the screen. Your shadow or the shadow of your puppets will come to life. But make sure that the audience sits on the other side of the screen. The play will be much more magical for them from that side. Tom Thomas, light! Oh, wow! Simka! You look totally like the real Red Riding Hood. Hello, dear granddaughter. Hello, dear grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. <laughs> no, like, come on, we're rehearsing. <laughs> the wolf's voice is funny. Grandmother, I never noticed what very big teeth you've got. They're so much better to eat you with, my dear. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Let them out, Wolf. Or I'll, or I'll get them out whoa, myself. Ha <laughs> ha, you'll stop me with that little stick? Hey, that's not in the fairy tale. But in the fairy tale, it's a normal hunter. And what do you think I am? Look for yourself. You're way too small to be the hunter. Fine, then go to your play without me. Well, I guess I'll have to make the hunter out of paper then. That's all. Take a break. I'm really thirsty. She was so salty, that grandma. No, Lick, don't be upset. The wolf is huge and I'm so little. Then let's make you bigger. You see, now you're bigger. Yeah, you're right. And if we go back here, then I'm even bigger. Now you know. If you go back here near the lamp, your shadow will get bigger on the screen. Class! There are just so many different kinds of theaters in the world. In the dramatic theater, the actors speak the lines of the playwright. At the opera, the actors don't speak their lines. They sing them, accompanied by an orchestra. And here at the ballet, the performers don't speak or sing their parts. Here, the story is told with dance. There are also theaters where the performers are animals. In an animal theater, you can watch performances by cats and dogs, or goats and pigeons, or even bears and seals. There are also theaters where the stories are told by puppets. To tell the truth, the puppets are brought to life with the help of people. Yes, there are so many different kinds of theater. My favorite is the Shadow Theater. I think it's the most beautiful and mysterious theater of them all. Hello, dear grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. And grandmother, what great big sharp teeth you've got. 
All the better to eat you up with, my dear. Um. Ooh, just wait. Aha, Wolf. I got you. The hunter looks so strong. You're a hunter? Then where's your gun? Why do I need a gun? You're so tiny I could use a fly swatter. <laughs> but I'd rather do it like this. Like what? With my bare hands. Way to go! <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite. Mine was the grandmother. Well, I think Red Riding Hood was the best. For me, the hunter. He was so mighty and so fearless. And for me, the special effects. <laughs> the laboratory. Get to the school right away! What did he say? That we've got to get to the school. How come? Did you hear why? I didn't. Did you? I wonder if Simka didn't go to school today. Or if Nolik got into some kind of mischief. Oh, I'm worried this is something serious. La 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 la. And that's five, six. I like this hairstyle. Seven, eight. <gasps> oh, hi there. Hello, Verda. Oh, where's Grampus? I'm not positive, but go and look in the chemistry area over there. Over in chemistry? Uh, tell us, was Nolik doing anything wrong today? Nolik? He's always fooling around. Right. So we're not here for anything Nolik did. Maybe something awful happened to him. Like what? Well, how about anything? This isn't just a school for fixies. This is a laboratory. The laboratory where Professor Eugenius works is always humming. In the mechanical zone, Professor Eugenius tests all sorts of different devices to see how well they are made. In the chemistry zone, he conducts experiments on the quality and safety of food. In the electrical zone, he repairs electrical devices and checks their safety. Unfortunately, the professor can be absent-minded, and that can cause things in his laboratory to bubble, spark, or even explode! Masya, there's nothing to worry about yet. But how can I not worry? Digit, have you seen Nolik anywhere? Do you know if anything's happened to him? This is a laboratory here. Who knows what could happen to anyone? Like what? What are you saying? Like that. I told you, things happen here. And where? Let's go! Uh, Quickly! Marcia, no need to panic. Tula, oh. where is so good you're here? We really need your help. What is going on? Oh, oh, there! Oh, wee! Grampus! What? Where? In the mechanical zone, there! And Simka and Nolik? There! Children. Don't lose your head. Oh! Oh! Asya is my wife and the mother of our children, Simka and Nolik. Masya is a real beauty, a kind and gentle soul, and a wonderful homemaker. She is also a very responsible and extremely skilled fixie. She is our family's expert in kitchen appliances and gadgets. Masya works from morning till night, fixing and cleaning anything that is in need of her expert care. Because she just loves when everything is clean and tidy. But most important for Masya are her children. She takes loving care of Simka and Nolik and tries to protect them from harm. Masya worries about them so much that sometimes her imagination gets carried away with what might have happened to them. Although our little Nolik can get himself into situations that even Masya could never have dreamed of. Tight! We'll 
will save you! Oh! You're alive! What's going on? I don't need to be saved from anything. So it's Simca we need to save, not you? I don't need saving either. I'm fine. And what are you so worried about? Everyone's alive. Then why did you make us come here? I need you to help with a little accident we had. Noli, was this your fault? Oh, no, it's not Nolik's fault. Quite the opposite. He was trying to help me fix it. Papus, we need you to help us with one of the pieces that we couldn't get back in place. This one? <gasps> huh? Uh. Oh, a perfect repair. Huh, that was really the only reason we had to rush here? Why not? There was just no way we could let this wait, so I sent for you. But fire said... Why fire? Why is it always fire? How come you had to scare us so badly? I'm not the one who scared you. You did that all by yourselves. The dog. <gasps> it's about me. Pixies? It's Chusaka. It sounds like she's angry with us. I wish I knew what that mad dog was thinking about. I'm thinking about you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You better hide or people will see you. I'm leaving. See you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going to rain. <sighs> Chusaka, I have no time to play right now. I'm not playing. His feet are going to get soaked. Tom Thomas, I'm off. Don't be late. <laughs> Chusaka, that's enough. No, I need to go to school. He's got his math class today and he's leaving his math book. I'm trying to serve like a good dog, but no one understands me. Dogs have been serving people since ancient times, along with cows, horses, chickens, and other domestic animals. But of all of these animals, the dog was the very first. In the beginning, domesticated dogs looked like wolves. Over time, they started changing and were developed into dogs of many different breeds, from big shepherds to tiny chihuahuas. So a dog is not only a human's best friend, but his very first friend as well. What is that smell? of service dogs. Dogs that help people by carrying out a wide variety of different jobs, like protecting a house or a flock of sheep if the dogs are shepherds. Some working dogs help guards protect their borders, while others work for the police. There are sled dogs that transport people and loads in the north, where there's only snow and no roads. Some service dogs help blind people by helping them get to the places they need to go. And there are dogs that save people trapped on mountains. And that's not all. Dogs went up into space before humans. But don't think that dogs are just given these jobs. Oh, no. Like humans, dogs study for a long time before they're allowed to take on serious work. 
Yeah, that's all. There won't be a fire. Not today. Hooray! Well done, Chusaka. You're a real service dog, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah, I'm working. I'm a real service dog. Oh, Chusaka, go away. I've had enough of you already today. Don't say that, because this working dog just saved your house from burning down. What do you mean? She smelled smoke coming from the outlet. It could be that Chusaka means well and wants to do the right thing, but nobody understands her. That's a bit hard to believe. Then what's this book? Oh, my math book. That's where I left it. Remember how Chusaka wanted to make you take it to school this morning? You're right. Atta girl, Chusaka. Well done. Hetsu. <coughs> what a rain. My feet got wet to the bone. But this morning, Chusaka tried to get you to wear a different pair of shoes. Hmm, that's something. I should listen more closely to this smart little dog of ours. <laughs> Finally! They understand me! The fire extinguisher. So, who can tell me? In the home, what is the greatest danger of them all? Chusaka! Well, dogs are dangerous for us, but what is very scary for us and for humans? Fire! <laughs> Where? I was just answering what you asked us. Although your joke was awful, Fire, your answer was actually correct. Nothing can be worse than getting caught inside a house on fire. Don't know much about chemistry, but I can handle circuitry. That's an interesting idea. I have to try it out. And that's why every Pacamat has a fire extinguisher inside of it. And how do you turn them on? Well, I'll show you at the end of the lesson. Nolik, listen, yell fire. How come? I just want to find out how the professor turns on a fire extinguisher. Forget it, fire. I won't do it for you. Blah. Fire! Huh? Huh? You again? I was joking. It's a stupid kind of joke, and I want you to leave right now. Actually, I should call your parents to discuss this terrible behavior. Fire is no joke at all. Remember, never fool with fire. Of course, you should never play with matches or with lighters. Everybody knows that. But those aren't the only things that can cause a fire inside of a house. So can a stove or a fireplace. And don't forget electrical appliances, like electric burners, space heaters, and irons. If you act carelessly around any of these appliances, they can cause a fire. And we should never forget to take extra special care with sparklers, candles, and fireworks. Sparks can jump off of them and set fire to highly flammable things like paper, wood, or cloth. So, what do you do if a fire suddenly breaks out? That's right! You call the fire department by dialing the number for all emergencies, 911. Huh? What's going on? No way. No way! Fire? It's burning for real! Fire! What do I do? Oh, yeah! I need a fire extinguisher! Where are you? And that's how a Pacamat can become a fire extinguisher. Do you understand? We understand. There's a fire! It's over there! Enough! You don't know when to stop, Fire. I'm not joking this time. Please believe me, it's there. Hmm. Nice try, Fire. Oh, look, he even used smoke this time. No, Simka, that smoke's from a fire. Uh-huh. I'm sure that this time it's for real. It's the truth. I swear I'm not lying. This time I think it's true. He's not joking. We've got ourselves a real fire here. Tula, Simka, turn off the soldering iron. Uh-huh. Got it! Be careful, kids. You have to stay back here, away from the fire. And what can I do to help? Take out your fire extinguisher! <sighs> Long ago, people used to put out fires with just water or sand. Today, people also use fire extinguishers. Fire 
fire extinguishers are cylinders with hoses. They're usually painted red, so they're easy to see. The cylinder is filled up with a special powder or foam. If someone needs to put out a fire, they point the hose at the fire, pull out the safety pin and squeeze the handle. The foam or powder shoots out of the extinguisher and puts out the fire. Our fire extinguishers are just too small for this fire. We have to find Professor Eugenius to put it out. I already did. All right, where's the fire? Oh. Oh. Hooray! Hooray! We put out the fire! You fixies are just the greatest. Thank you, you saved the whole laboratory. <laughs> not at all, colleague. If not for you fixies, I can't even fathom how this could have ended. And what I'm wondering is how the fire got started at all. Fire? I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, sure. Then who was yelling, fire, fire? You know what? Maybe it was you that set the fire. Well, if that's what happened, don't even think about coming back to school without your parents. Colleague, colleague, wait. It's all my fault. I didn't turn off the soldering iron. Forgive me. Now we know whose parents the school should be calling. <laughs> the baby monitor. Oh, it's my old baby monitor. On. Check, check, checking. One, two, three, checking. It's working. Hmm. Why don't we give it to the Johnsons? They just had a baby the other day. Oh, uh -uh, this is mine. And I'm planning on using it. Aren't you a little too big for it? No, I'm not big at all. Well, I didn't realize that you're still a little boy. And a greedy one at that. They're never going to notice this. Hey, Fixies, are you here? We're here now. Why did you call us? I got to show you how I turned into a mind reader. I find that just a little hard to believe. OK, then I'll show you. I'll leave you alone, and then you'll hide this button wherever you want. Then I'll come back and find it. <laughs> you got it. So where's a good hiding place? Well, we got to think of one. Uh, right here, under the keyboard. Great. Go on, Nolik. Come on in. We're ready for you. And now, I'm going to read your thoughts. Here I go. Hmm. You hit the button here. Look. Ta-da. He really does read minds. Oh, that was a lucky guess. Bet you can't do it again. Well, I bet you I can. We're gonna have to be sneakier. Verda, she's the most beautiful girl in our class. She knows it, too, and doesn't hesitate to use it. She can even be a bit sneaky. Like when she needs help with her homework, then Digit suddenly becomes her best friend. But if she doesn't want to carry her pack a mat, she'll say, Fire, please help me. You're just such a strong fixie. But all us boys like her just the same. Digit does, and Nolik does, and I guess I do too. Although, I really like Simka more. Or maybe Verda. Or both of them. I haven't decided yet. Verda can be difficult and even bossy sometimes. But one thing I know for sure, Verda's a good friend. A friend that'll always come help. Well, that is if she's able to pry herself away from the mirror. I think that we should throw it down into this pencil cup. But then we concentrate on another place. Hmm, that is good, but it won't work, Fixies. Come on in. Uh-huh. <laughs> hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. It's in here. Tidish? Simka, were you thinking about the cup? No, I swear. And my mind was blank. Then who did, huh? Hmm. Uh-huh. Tom Thomas, what do you say we go again? As many times as you want. I know how he's been doing all of this. It's a baby monitor. That's how he can hear what we're saying. I don't get it. A baby monitor 
helps parents watch over their babies. The system has two units that look like wireless telephones. The parents keep one of the units by their side and put the other one in the room where the baby is sleeping. If the baby suddenly wakes up and starts crying, the unit in the baby's room will pick up the sound and send it by radio waves to the parents' unit. Mom or Dad will hear the crying and go and comfort their child. And so he's listening to us now. This time I know what we should do. We'll hide it under the globe. Ooh! Go on! Hmm! Uh-huh! Aha! Huh? Where is it? If you read our minds, you'd find your button under the baby monitor. You tricked me! That's really not nice. And spying on us is nice, you think? I'm sorry, I just thought it'd be fun. Well, anyhow, Tom Thomas, you're too old for this thing. Unless, of course, you still need it. I'm not a baby. I was just, you know, checking it. I'll go and give it to Mom. Mom, I'm not greedy. About what? Let's give this monitor to the Johnsons. And this car is for their baby boy. Hmm, I don't think that baby's big enough yet for your car. So what? Soon he's gonna get bigger and become a big boy, right? Like me. GPS. And three, four. Stop. Who goes next? I'm next. Five. One, two, three, three. Wait, I gotta choose a route. Should I go here or there? Choose already. Nolik, what are you doing over there? Nothing at all. Just waiting at my place. Good, and don't get off it. Wellfire? What was that? The alarm on my fixie tab. Oh, our lesson's about to start. Hurry! What about the game? Later! As soon as young Fixies enter their first year of Fixie school, everyone gets their own Fixie tab. It's a little computer that can do anything at all. Well, almost anything at all. Studying with a Fixie tab is fantastic. You can read it just like a book and write in it just like writing in a notebook. You can use a Fixie tab to listen to music, watch movies, find your way around, and talk, text, and send letters to your friends. And if you want, you can use a Fixie tab to go on to the internet that humans use, or you can visit the secret Fixie internet, where you can find news about the world of the Fixies. And Fixie tabs have games on them, too. Of course, these games can be a lot of fun, but you shouldn't play games until your homework is all done. Faster, or we'll be late! I know a shortcut we can use, this way. Now which way do we go? I need to remember the route. I think it's this way, or it could be that way. Well, which is it, this or that? Uh, I have no clue. Uh-huh. So what's our plan? We'll go back and start again. We flew in from there, right? No, I think it was there. That's not how we flew in. It was there. Ah, uh, I think we're lost in here. Uh-oh. No, like, stop the panicking. I only went, uh-oh, I'm not panicking yet. It's your fault, Fire. I know a shortcut. Go this way. How are we going to get out of here? How do I know? All I know is that we're late for our lesson. Thanks to someone. It wasn't on purpose, I swear. Now Grandpa's will punish us. <gasps> What's going on? Well, I think I found a way to get out. Which way? Right here. I forgot that inside of my fixie tab is a GPS navigator. Wes, uh, what's a navigator? A GPS navigator is an interactive electronic map that can help you find your way around. The navigator can figure out where you are by using signals that are sent to it from satellites. 
All you have to do is type the address of the place you want to go into it, and the GPS can figure out a route to get you there. And then it helps you as you go by telling you where and when you need to turn, so you can easily get to your destination. Let's see. Right now, we're here. And where do we need to go? <laughs> you know where to school. But where is that? Are you joking? In the laboratory of Professor Eugenius. Can you be quiet? Where do you want to go? The laboratory of Professor Eugenius. Please wait while I chart out the route. Ha! It did it! <laughs> the navigator says to go there. Hey, what are you doing over there? Come on! And if you happen to go off route, the navigator will give you a different way to... Well, you finally made it. Unfortunately, you missed an important lesson today. We got lost. Forgive us. In case you're wondering, we were studying navigators. And you know what? We just used a navigator to get here. Yeah, it showed us the way we had to go. Well, that's certainly quite lucky for you, because now you don't get an F. But from now on, kids, you have to get here on time. I promise you that. Because now we know where to get our shortcuts from. The instructions. Oh, oh. <laughs> hmm, it doesn't work. Try putting it in the other way. Did you read the instructions? Why would I? Instructions are for dummies. Yeah, instructions are for dummies. All right. Oh, what's going on? Whoa! Instructions teach us how to do things right. Instructions for a piece of furniture explain how to put it together. With the instructions for a television, we can adjust the picture and sound the way we like them. Printed on a box of oatmeal are the instructions for how to cook it. The instructions for medicines tell us what the medicine is for and how to safely use it. So always read the instructions if you want to do things right and avoid a lot of problems. I found it. Here it is. Here you go, Tom Thomas. Whoa. We got your new chair, but it has to be assembled, and I'm afraid it'll be a little bit difficult for you. No, it won't. Don't worry, Dad. I'll do it. Finish before dinner, and we'll get ice cream tonight. A creamsicle. Two, okay? First, assemble the chair. Hmm. Tom Thomas, can I help you put the chair together? Come on. Hey, first you two need to read the instructions. Ah, Simka, stop being such a bore. What, like I haven't seen a chair? Or like I haven't seen a chair? Well, Tom Thomas, you done? Dinner's ready. Let's go. Oh, Dad, no. I need another two minutes. Hmm. Simka, help me. How? What does it say I have to do in the instructions? Ah, I thought you could do it without them. Ah, all right, I'll help you. Let's see. Take this part over here and that one over there. No, look, get a screw. No, the longer one. It's over there. The very first stools and benches appear as far back as ancient Egypt. The pharaoh's stool was special because it had a back. It is thought that the pharaoh's stool was actually the first chair. For a long time, a chair was considered a luxury. Rich noblemen would bring their own chairs to parties. And the more important the man, the higher the back of his chair. 
It wasn't until the 19th century that chairs became part of every house. Today, there are just so many different kinds of chairs. There are wooden chairs, plastic chairs, metal chairs, chairs with legs, chairs with wheels, folding chairs, baby chairs, just all sorts of chairs. Well, how could people sit down at the table <laughs> with no chairs? Ooh, I think we'll make it. Screw it in, quickly. No, look, we need one more screw. But there aren't any. There is, you gotta find it. I Everywhere. Tom Thomas, time's up. No, look, you have to help. How? Just for a minute, that's all. Turn into a screw. If it's only a minute, I'll do it for you. I'm done. You built it. Huh. Great job, son. Mom, see how I won the bet. Can you believe it? He put the chair together. <gasps> You're so brilliant. Go on, have a seat. Oh! Huh? <gasps> uh. Ah, uh, now I see. You missed a screw. But I screwed it in. It must have. Uh, must have. What? Must have what? Look. Here it is. Uh, uh. Now this screw's not going anywhere. And that ice cream you won? Well, you just lost it. Well then, Mr. Chair Builder, time for dinner? Yeah, in a sec. Where is that Nolik? He ran away. What a traitor. No, he's not. He promised you he'd become a screw for just a minute. And the minute was up. Well, where is he then? Over there. He's studying the instructions for the clock. Hey, Tom Thomas, it says that we put the wrong kind of battery into the clock. We should have used that kind. You see, Tom Thomas? If you don't want to be a dummy, instructions are for you. 